Hello and welcome to What's Bubbling a Zim. I'm Dr. Abstract and in this Zim Bubbling we're going to take a break from what's new in 10.6.0 and take a look at uh, what we've done with the, the three JS orbit controls and Zim. Let's go have a look now. So here is an example of traditionally how we've used the orbit controls with Zim. This dark rectangle represents, a, well, this is all a Zim frame, and this dark rectangle represents the 3JS world inside of a Zim frame. And we've turned the interactivity of that 3JS world to true with the parameter. And that allows us to use orbit controls anywhere inside this, this area. And then use Zim controls outside that area, like so, to rotate it. Now you've got one or the other. You can't have Zim controls in behind here and still work. And you can't have three JS controls here and work. So that's why they're separated in space. You know? So this is three JS and the rest outside is Zim. Uh, it has to do with passing events across multiple canvases. What we've done is we've overlaid a canvas here, and if that's interactive, then the canvas underneath doesn't get it. If it's not interactive, then it doesn't get it. <laughs> so it's sort of like a, mm, erg, a bit of a pain. Uh, we've dealt with that, or we didn't deal with it. The uh, CreateJS folks dealt with multiple canvases by having this thing called Next Frame. And next frame allows you, well, actually, that's what we've called it, the next stage, I guess they call it. When we have multiple frames, there's a, a parameter in, in the frame call that allows you to specify what is the next frame that will receive mouse events. And that allows us to have multiple canvases with mouse events on all of them. Well, uh, 3JS isn't Zim, so we, it wasn't arranged between us. So what, what, we, what we've just recently done is gone into the orbit controls to remedy that. So let's have a look and see what that's like. So here's a site called, or a page called 3JS uh, Sandwich. And what we've got is on the top layer, we have um, Zim. And on the bottom layer, we have Zim. But then in between, we have um, 3JS orbit controls. Now, the one drawback is, it's fine on the top. Take a look at that. We were dragging Zim, and it's not dragging the orbit controls. But if I drag the box, oh dear. Well, did you see what happened there? If I drag the box and happen to pick on Zim behind the box, it drags. If I don't pick on Zim behind the box, then it doesn't drag, but it's just it's just going to be like <laughs> good luck. So if we refresh here, refresh. There's no zim right down this crack, so I can pick that crack up and 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 do the orbit controls, or indeed I can orbit controls out here. So anywhere we can orbit controls, except if we're on something that is zim. However, the sandwich is there, so we've certainly made progression. It just means. Don't stick something that is Zim directly behind the 3JS object because we can't. The 3JS object isn't interactive. I don't know if I've clicked on there. So at the moment, we have no way to tell if I, if I'm, if I'm. There's no way to stop the click on Zim. So no, nothing's going to stop that click on Zim. Uh, here stops the click on Zim because we're clicking on something that is Zim and it doesn't click through. Uh, we know that, but here we we don't know. We're not really pressing on 3JS. We're actually pressing on a rectangle that the rectangle sits in behind here. We're pressing on a rectangle behind everything to get that to work. If we put the rectangle above this, then indeed when we pressed on the rectangle, we'd see this. The problem is the rectangle would then cover this the Zim stuff in behind. And let's see, I don't think there's an easy way to pass that through a Zim object. Um, there are bubbling events and whether events capture things, but I think that's just in the order in which they capture. Now, uh, it may be that I haven't looked into that fully. That's always been a bit of a tricky issue as to 
how to do that, you might be able to set it up so that we can hard code specific things in, which would basically say, uh, but then you're still going to run into it. You're going to run into another problem, though. You're going to run into this problem. So let's show you uh, sandwich two. It, even if you solve that problem, you're going to end up with something like this, where Zim is moving and the orbit controls are moving. So it would be, it would end up being like that. Oh, great! <laughs> you know, so you'd have to kind of almost a bit. How you would do it is you would find out where the three JS object is and remove any event listeners from the circles that are behind the three JS object. And then you would end up with something uh, that, you know, we really do want and, and that would be that. But anyway, like, like I said, we certainly made progress for the most part. The, the idea is don't put any Zim directly behind the three JS object. Otherwise you might run into this. Well, uh, Actually, I guess it would be, you might run into this issue, but uh, we're there. Let's take a look and see uh, the code. How about that? This is a bubbling. It's not really an explore. We're just trying to show you what's new. What's new is that we've got an orbit, um, orbit controls for 3JS that it has been hacked in a sense to work with Zim. So let's, uh, like I said, take a look at the code. We are here in Sandwich. Let's look at the orbit first. Orbit was the traditional way we did it. We brought in a uh, note that we've made new connections to the uh, both 3JS and Orbit, where we're putting them in a, a version number in our CDN. So that's a bit of a change. We wanted to make sure this worked with the latest. We were previously working with I don't know, version 89 or something, but now we've got um, support uh, seems fine for version R109 of 3JS. There's the orbit controls that we've made adjustments to, and I'll show you that in a bit. But if we come in here, uh, which one is this? This is orbit, a backing of a rectangle. Right, that was the dark rectangle. The just uh, let me show you what that looks like without it. If we have no backing, we just don't see that backing rectangle. And it, it's, it's the same where we have the controls here within a certain space. Lost it. Controls within, lost it. So that backing rectangle is just to kind of show you, indicate where the controls are. It also highlights our box a little bit better. But other than that, it was, it was doing nothing there. It was just a, a visual thing. So we don't have to store it in a variable. We could have done that. It's fine. But that kind of gives it a label saying, that's what it is. It's a backing. Then we made our 3JS. We set the interactive to true. So that's what you want to do. If you don't do that, then you can or it can't interact with that, that, um, that box. But you could interact with things in Zim that were inside that box, or that underneath that box, or above the box, or whatever. I guess it'd be underneath in this case. We made a scene. We did some 3JS stuff. We have a mesh. And then our controls are, there's the dial. Oh, sorry, that's not, this is the orbit control. So there, there are the orbit controls, just like normal. And here's the dial where we're controlling our mesh with the dials info. Uh, we have introduced in Zim 10.6.0 some new constants. Uh, one of them is rad. If you multiply by rad, that converts to radians. If you multiply deg by deg degrees dg, then it, it turns them into degrees. So that's kind of cool. Um, good. So that's the, the, the basic, the older one, the basic uh, one that we've had all along, where we can separate out regions. Basically, what we're doing is separating out regions of, of the stage or frame. So some are Zim and some are 3JS. Uh, it's quite practical. However, if you want to overlay a full 3JS scene and want to use orbit controls, but also use Zim on top of that, then we've solved that problem in this sandwich version here. Uh, you don't need to actually use multiple frames for that. You would still, uh, what you would do is put a, a rectangle in behind like we've done here. So here's here's one frame. Uh, this version has three frames, but you don't have to do it three frame ways. Uh, three frame ways. Let's see, uh, would that solve the problem? 
no, you still have the problem. Then you then you could not put any Zim behind the three JS. So this puts Zim behind the three JS if that's necessary. I'm not sure how often that's going to come up. You might have a scroller in the background, maybe. Yeah, it could could be. I want a scroller in the background. That wouldn't have any interactivity on it, so it would be fine. You'd have the scroller in there, no interactivity. Uh, any dragging on the background, in a sense, would then control the orbit controls. And then you would have Zim interface on top, like dials or buttons or whatever on top, and those would be interactive without doing the orbit controls. So that would be ideal. Zim in the background, the scroller, 3JS scene in the front ground, um, orbit controls are handled, but they're handled in a slightly different way. Uh, let me show you how that way is. Okay. So here we are, we, we've set up a variable called Zim control, and we stored that outside of the frame. And we've stored a rectangle in that, and, and that's it. So that's our backing rectangle, same color as the frame. So if we want, we can change that to purple, like so. And when we refresh, yeah. Now there's, that's the purple in the background. That's what's going to end up, anytime we press on the purple, it's going to do the orbit controls. But when we press on here, uh, this, by the way, is, is also, we, we put in gestures. So right now I'm gesturing these. Let's make them a bit smaller. Uh, this also works with gestures. So this is my finger that's pressing on that. I can make that bigger or smaller. So isn't that neat? There's the Zim layer on top. Here's the... Uh, see, I, I, I guess I missed that. Here's the Zim layer on the bottom. But now watch what happens. If if I pick up here, that's fine. But if I pick up in the middle, oh man, I, I picked up the, the Zim in behind there. So that was that issue. But if you don't have that interactivity there, if that's just a Zim scroller, no problem. You're going to be able to gesture this around as long as you don't hit Zim on the top, you're good. But isn't that neat? So that's a Zim gesture on there. And still works with the orbit controls. Okay, I, I missed and therefore it did the orbit controls. There's one and I missed. How am I missing there? I'm just not picking up. There we go. Okay, so um, what was the, uh, what were we doing? Okay, yeah, we, we just showed that this purple is the control object we're calling it. So there it is, control object. Now, the way we started, the broken way, uh, sandwich two, is we use the stage to as a control object. Neat thing about a stage is it will activate even if we're clicking on something on Zim. So if you want orbit controls all the time, then just pass a Zim uh, st stage as your control object. But uh, we realized that actually that's probably not what we wanted because remember it, it made a, it made it so that when we drag on anything on Zim it was still doing the orbit controls. So we had to back out of that a little bit and allow us to pass any object. So here's our object. There's the tiling. There's the gesture on the tiling there. That could be drag. Uh, let's change it to drag and you can see the difference of you know, what that makes. And I'm coming down and going to the other one too. We've got two of them drag is, is on the second one. If I refresh here, then we are picking up, uh, we're just dragging things. We can drag things on both. We can drag this one off. We can drag that one off, but watch what happens. Here I am. I'm wanting to, I'm wanting to move this. I'm wanting to, you know, move this thing. And I go to, to move it and I end up dragging the thing underneath it. So that's great. What about here? What would happen if I pick up here? You see how it looks like I'm, uh, just ready to move that thing around? Nope, no moving. Oh, it seems broken because I'm dragging the Zim thing in behind it. Once that Zim thing's gone, it's fine. So just don't put anything behind there, <laughs> okay? Don't put any interactive things behind, and then your interactive things on top are work, but the interactive things behind are messing it up, okay? So hopefully that's uh, relatively clear. Anyway, I'll undo the drags, turn them back to gestures. This was the first tile. Now we move to the second frame. The second frame is what's going to hold our 3JS scene, just like before. We don't make it interactive, though. So the 3JS scene is not interactive because it's stage width, stage height. If we made it interactive, it would override um, the, the, 
Uh, I think it overrides. Maybe it only overrides a thing in behind. Should we try it? Yeah, let's try that. So in JavaScript 6, oh, we have to call them the same things. Frame 2 needs to be the same as frame. So that's frame colon. This is width. And this is height. AGI. GHT. And then finally, interactive colon true. We'll see what happens there. I know for sure that we won't be able to access the circles, but I think we'll still be able to access the, so we can access the rectangles, but when we go to try, and we access the circles, hang on, sandwich. Still going through, oh, because uh, we didn't change the other stuff. So we set that interactive true, but we don't really need to because um, orbit controls we passed in the zim control, so let's not do that. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of ourselves a little bit. All right, so there. Wow, we can interact with zim through that. Now this is an interactive. Something uh, got messed up. Let's just see. How did that get messed up? 3JS, frame, width, height, interactive, true. I don't see it being interactive. Let's just comment out our third frame for a second. Maybe the third frame is just not letting that be interactive. Yeah, okay, that's what's happening. Uh, the circles can drag because the first frame is passing events through to the last frame. No problem. But the whole first frame here is stopping the interactive true on 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 anything else on, on the on the 3JS one. So if we get rid of the third one, here we are getting rid of the third one, then great, this is interactive, but we can't interact with anything behind this. So because the whole 3JS is the size of the stage, we have no way to interact with the things in behind. We can only interact with the 3JS. All right, so undo all that. Undo, 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 undo. So I guess that wouldn't have made a difference whether we made that interactive or not. As soon as we put the third frame on top, we can't inter we can't get to the three JS. Okay, so here's the three JS. We uh, don't care about it interactive. We add the orbit controls anyway, uh, but we pass in the zim control, and so that's what we've updated. That's what allows all this to happen. Um, is that the orbit controls have been modified to allow some Zim object to operate the orbit controls. That Zim object, once again, was the, uh, was up here, was this Zim control. What would happen, here's a test for you, what would happen if we put that above the tile? All right, well, that solves one of the problems. We refresh here, we can now, uh, we, <laughs> We don't see the tile. So there, there's the issue. Um, we've got now something on top, great, and we've got something behind there. So it simplifies things. Any Anywhere we press off, we can move it, but here this stuff is, is Zim-based. Yay! We have nothing in behind. We have the purple in behind, but we can't see the tiles anymore. Uh, and, and I mean, if this were uh, where is it? Right here. Here's a rectangle. If we say, why the heck do we even have framed up? If we say purple, um, if we say uh, clear, there's clear. Now we can't interact with the rectangle. This would be amazing if it works. And now we can see through there. We can get here, but we can't interact with that rectangle. It's clear. You can't interact with clear. What if we say faint? So. Instead of clear, we say faint. That would be fine. We refresh here. Um, now we can see through it. It's faint. We can interact with the box here, but we can't interact with the circles through the faint. So, whatever. <laughs> okay, it's just kind of like a no-win situation in, in regards there. Anyway, let's get back to the positive side of things, and that positive th side of things. So really, we should put this purple thing back. That was in behind. We didn't even really want it purple, did we? So 
So there it is. We made it the stage color. For, uh, ah, that's right. Frame dot color this is why we had frame dot color. That's the color of this of the stage. I don't think there is such a thing as stage dot color. I could be wrong. Let me put that in there. Nope. Stage dot color is no. It doesn't have a color. But the frame in behind does. Um, frame probably should just add the color to the stage. Why the heck not? Huh? Make, it, make it easier. All right, so we're back to our original where we're good. We've got three things, but uh, we always have to make sure we don't press on something in behind. Okay. Um, right, how did we do that? Frame two, here it is, the mystery revealed. We're passing in that background to the orbit controls. Here's the orbit controls. And there, there's us collecting the background. So this is 3JS. We grab this from their, their GitHub. And we basically say, hey, if there's something in the Zim control, otherwise it's, it's going to act like it always does. But if there's something in there, if it's a stage, then we're setting a variable is stage to true. If it is a stage, then we use the stage mouse down. And we otherwise it will only activate when we press on something on the stage, which is actually kind of the reverse of what we want. But anyway, here is a stage mouse move and a stage uh, mouse up. So those are all stage based. Otherwise, if it's not the stage, such as the rectangle we passed in, then it's going to use a traditional mouse down, press move, and press up. We collect the event object. But then we call these are the three JS functions on touch move, on touch start, on mouse down, on touch end. Those are three JS functions. They're expecting an event object. So we pass in the native event object. So instead of the create JS event, uh, luckily, create JS has provided a property to the original uh, uh, event on the canvas. So that gives us our original canvas event rather than the event object on a Zim rectangle. Okay, so e.target would be completely different. e.target would be the canvas rather than the rectangle. And indeed, touch information gets passed through that way, and um, mouse positioning gets passed through that way. So we just pass the native event on through to the functions that. Um, luckily, that was nicely abstracted. Of course, Mr. Doob is amazing. So 3JS is um, nicely abstracted so that uh, their, their events are all down here. Like there's a ton of stuff in here and we were worried, oh, I got to go in and do a ton of stuff. But if you get right down to the, the very bottom here, doot, 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 here are the only listeners. Well, close to the only listeners. Those are really the only listeners. So we looked at what they were calling, and instead of letting the uh, the DOM element, sorry, it's a phone, instead of letting the DOM element pick up the event listener, we're calling the function from the Zim listeners and passing into that the uh, event object, which is uh, the native event object. Woohoo! And ladies and gentlemen, why the heck don't we end it just in case somebody calls us back again? Uh, not with the Zim code pen message, but with the bubbling. That's been a what? But what's bubbling in Zim? I am Doctor Abstract. Hopefully that was a fun one for you. If you at all were wanting to do some three JS work. Uh, get 3D working in Zim and stuff like that. I think you'll find that that's quite uh, handy to have. Ciao.